Yeah, good day, viewers, and welcome to Nas TV Africa, where we manifest Africa's greatness. Today, on our popular program, the mentorship platform, we have a very big fish in our studio today, all the way from Lagos, that I come around to make sure that our youth are well mentored, advised, and guided. And they are going to meet this uh, gentleman of 21st century leadership compliance, entrepreneurial compliance, and uh, mentorship compliant uh he's not any person than uh, mr tunji suleiman he's going to tell us more about himself and uh, i want you to sit back and uh hold your device whether you're on laptop on your phone and uh, maybe i want you to really watch this and see what you can learn and uh, don't forget to leave your comments you're welcome mr tunji suleiman thank you very much yeah let's get down to business that this mentorship platform of Nas TV Africa, we have a manifest Africa's goodness. What we do is we bridge the gap between the youth, Africa youth out there, and the, men the mentors, the people that have done well for themselves in their respective field, that have gone through it all, and uh, they, they have necessary advice. And uh, they said that people grow further in life because they sit down on the shoulder of giants. And then today, we are presenting you as one of our giants in Africa that can advise the young one as the young ones to to be able to be well guided. So please can we meet you? The the, the viewers will really love to meet who Mr. Tony Sleman is. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdukadri. Um okay, so I'm a local boy. Mm. And uh, by that I mean that uh, I was born and bred right here in Elori here. Wow. So I'm an Elori product. Uh, but then I've uh, had the privilege and opportunity to go around the world. And, uh, but my story started here. Mm. I went to primary school right here in St. James C.A.C. Uh, Ilorin. I went to Ilorin Grammar School uh, from where I proceeded to Bakemaolo University, mm. where I studied computer engineering. Uh, so when I started my working career, I uh, first of all worked in the bank. And then I went on to discover very Zan. quickly uh, Bank of the North. Uh -huh. And I discovered very quickly that that was not uh, for me. Mm. So I went on to uh, leave that uh, because, you see, I studied computer engineering mm. and I am an ICT native. Mm. Uh, so I realized that my future will only be meaningful when I focus uh, on exactly what I have studied. So, that I can, uh, so I joined a company called... Uh, Internet Solutions Nigeria Limited. Mm. Uh, shortly after I quitted the bank, after about three months of uh, work there. Mm. So uh, in, at Internet Solutions, I was engaged as an, a network engineer. Mm. From where I rose on to become a network administrator. Mm. Uh, from there, I joined the company called Edge Atlantic, which was what the, we used to call at that time a VTSP, which is Voice Telephony Service Provider. Wow. Essentially, uh, that was the day when everybody and their grandfather wanted to be uh, <coughs> prepared, do prepaid calling cards mm. and what we call wholesale uh, voice over IP mm. uh, termination. So I did a stint in that place and then I left and joined a US company called Free Fornet. Uh, where I was uh, the manager for Africa, mm. uh, all overseeing the operations of the company and the setup in uh, across com uh, countries in Africa. Mm. Uh, from there, I quitted and became a, an ICT consultant, mm. uh, starting out in my own firm, uh, Netmetrix Limited. Okay. Uh, and then Netmetrix Limited now um, will be celebrating its 20 years of existence wow. uh, next year. So we've been on this journey for quite a while. Uh, so primarily, uh, my core is that um, I'm an ICT expert. Oh, okay, I like to call myself a professional, though some okay. people will say I'm an expert. Mm. Um, in the ICT domain, I've uh, traversed uh, infrastructure, mm. I've traversed uh, networking, mm. I've traversed um, the security, and then now I do more in the area of cyber security. Cyber. Uh, and between that time, I now also have uh, ventured into other things. Uh, so I do some investments in real estate, in um, other areas of the economy. And then my latest venture is in the agricultural space, where I'm putting together a ranch here in uh, Ilori. Actually, it's a suburb of Ilori in uh, Agbaku, in Moro, local government. Okay. So that has been um, my journey. 
uh, along all of this journey has been a passion to impact mm. on society, mm. to impact on the economy, mm. you know, and to create employment. Mm. And basically just uh, add my quota to the economy of Kwara State. Uh, this has uh, impassioned me for some time, and that uh, culminated in the venture I first of all did here all right. some years back, which uh, of course, unfortunately, did not uh, succeed. Uh, but we are back this time, okay. and uh, we are back in the agricultural sector, where we want to try to see how we can create a new economy Thank around you. the Agbaku village in the Moro local government in Kwara uh, State. Fantastic. Oh, this is a very good one, and. Uh, when going through your profile with this brief uh, biography, it, yeah, it's quite impressive. Uh, now, during this your journey, you know that this physics stood up life, the ups and down. You know there were times when you are celebrating twenty years of uh, net metrics next year, and twenty years at fast year. Then, then I'm sure you must have gone through certain ups and down. I know there were times where you almost gave up, maybe. Financially, maybe. What were those things that kept you home? Was it money? Was it vision? What is it that kept you on? And what, what can you remember vividly those periods that you almost gave? What happened? And how did you overcome? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Abdukadri. Um, I think what I would say, uh, when I started entrepreneurship, I think the greatest challenge at the time was capital. Mm. Uh, it's not like today where you have a venture VC company, you have a equity uh, company, you have all sorts of uh, grants and so many other you know uh, means of access to mm. uh, business capital. In those days, if you cannot uh, do it through family or friends, you have to go through the hard way of going through the banks, which mm. in fact is extremely difficult. It's like passing a camera through the eye of a needle. Mm. So, but uh, by and large, I think my greatest challenge initially when I started, um, not uh, when I actually uh, ventured from consulting to uh, uh, cap to business itself. You know, there's uh, uh, consulting is more like self employment. Mm. But when we decided to create a company, mm. our greatest challenge was uh, 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 capital because at the time. One of the things we wanted to do was to create um, a pay TV company. But naturally, that did not happen uh, because we couldn't access the necessary capital. Uh, later, by the time we had overcome the capital issue and then you know, we had gone into different areas, I think part of the problem that came later was the problem of policy. You know, a situation where you have, um, you know, at the level of policy, we are moving like one step mm -hmm. forward to step backward. So you have a scenario where you are applying for, for example, maybe licenses from the regulators. And then after you have, um, after you are probably on the verge of securing foreign uh, funding, you mm -hmm. discover that government has changed the policy environment again, and then you are starting all over. All over. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have the challenge of um, ha um, hiring good hands, you know, uh, Good hands with, uh, that are trainable, you know, that with uh, good work ethics, mm -hmm. you know, with um, integrity. I think that is perhaps one of our greatest and most enduring challenges across my entrepreneurial journey. Uh, because unfortunately, we are in a nation where somehow, uh, different from where we were growing up, the abiding culture seems to have become get rich quick. Mm. So you have people saying things like, um, you know, Isheke Kere, you know, uh, do small work, get yeah. big money, yeah. you know. And then some of all of these things affect how people come to work, you know, they, and then what they bring to work, what they expect to take out of it. So you find people who are not willing or even able to add value, mm. you know, but who want to get paid, you know, and they want to get paid real and good, good you know, who, and live large. So everybody wants to drive a G-Wagon now, everybody wants to uh, drive a Range Rover. There's nothing wrong with those aspirations. But you see, uh, Range Rover, G-Wagon, we come when you have added value. But unfortunately, we are still having this uh, challenge. Sure. And this is... Uh, and quick what are you doing about it? Can't well, just be complaining about it. As a mentor, is there anything? Is there any progress? Is there any 
uh, outfit partnering with to make sure this is become ministry? Well, um, as you know, uh, Mr. Abdelkadri, one of the areas we have uh, in uh, in our own way attempted to impact is that we have been active in the GEW, the Global Entrepreneurship uh, Network. Okay. Uh, network. So from time to time, I speak at a uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week event. Uh, from time to time, we endow uh, uh, prizes mm. for uh, students who are doing well, who have done well in the entrepreneurial space. I think this is part of uh, the reasons why I've been a regular feature in the Kwara State University um, uh, editions of uh, GW week. In fact, I still, uh, for some time, uh, and, and then, um, well, hopefully that stopped a while, but uh, hopefully we are going to bring that back. We have been issuing prizes to deserving students who have done well in entrepreneurial studies, especially for Kuala State University and then for a few other institutions. We also, from time to time in our own company, try to give uh, free uh, trainings, uh, both in our core of ICT and sometimes also in the area of enter enterprise development and entrepreneurship. We also become facilitators sometimes for establishment like yourself Thank you. and others. Thank you very much, Now, Because of our time, so let's quickly go to this. We are facing 2023 election. The third country cannot go beyond the mindset of their leaders and the collective mindset of Spain. I don't know the way what informed the decision of our people picking their leaders. Come 2023, 21st century, what sort of leader, in simple words, should Nigeria youth look out for that can cater for their needs and aspirations? And uh, how do they make their choices? Should it still be on party basis or individual with credentials? What do you advise the youth to look out for? And what do you advise the politician to do if Nigeria must actualize a dream? Thank you very much, Mr. Abdukadri. Um, Usually I shy away from uh, commenting on politics, especially on the public fora. Uh, and the reason for this is not far-fetched. I'm a businessman and then I'm in the private sector. However, you see, you cannot divest uh, um, because anyhow you look at it, an mm. entrepreneur is naturally a, na a nation builder mm. uh, because the entrepreneur is the, um, you see, he create employment, he adds value to the economy, he pay taxes to government, so he is also a nation builder in his own right. However, uh, where the leadership is uh, wanting, naturally, uh, you will have uh, gaps at the level of policy. Some of this also invariably affect business. So it is um, all of us, uh, it is the duty of all of us to contribute to nation building so as to uh, have uh, the kind of nation of our dream. And that starts from leadership. So uh, why not being a politician? I'm going to be advising our youth uh, come 2023 to open their eyes and shine their eyes very well. You know, politicians come with a lot of um, promises. promises. Uh, some of these promises emanate from um, dishonesty. Some of it emanate from uh, hypocrisy. Some of it even emanates from, well, sometimes no, genuine, genuine. Uh, interest of the politician, but ignorance, lack of knowledge of the actual working, inner working of government is easier to be a critic mm. than to be uh, a, a leader in government. Because when you now get into government, you now discover things that you thought should uh, work in a certain way, but that actually work in practice uh, differently. Be that as it may, or haven't said all of that, what I'm going to be advising uh, is that, you see, our people should eschew this politics of uh, the belly or the politics of stomach infrastructure, mm. uh, mm. and all these type of uh, things. People should eschew it. Mm. We need to embrace um, leadership selection criteria, you know, that are qualitative, 
and that are decisive where we need to actually query. You know, we need to query these promises that politicians make to us. Uh, we need to start to wonder what are they going to really do, not just uh, if somebody comes and tell you, oh, I'm going to build a road from here to Mars. You want to know how are you going to fund it? You know, how, how is it going to be scheduled? Over what period? You know, and then uh, what uh, personnel does he have access to? To make this work, you know, and and to what uh, end? You know, to what? So these are we need to start to ask very deep fundamental questions, questions, fundamental yeah. questions from our politicians. Now, I like that. Just taking promises. I like that. So I think we can. That. Good. I think you can hear that, and then we need to start asking fundamental questions towards twenty twenty three. It's not just about. It will be very insulting for any politician to come and say, "Okay, I'm going to put the ball." I'm going to fix electricity. These are becoming rhetorics. What are the things they're going to do far beyond it? These are the promises we've been listening to since 1960. And up to now, somebody is still promising more well, water, good road in 2023. So we have to have fundamental questions. Okay, fine. Basically, you have to do all this. What are the things you want to do different from this that can even bring about all this? And that's very fundamental. Now, uh, advice finally on the final note. I want you to advise the youth, African youth, Nigeria youth to Africa youth. Advise them on leadership and on values. Those two things. The very key. Uh, thank you very much once again. Um, my advice to our youth is that uh, we need to embrace the or we need to reassess mm. our value system as a whole, you know. Mm. So um, if you look at it now, almost everywhere now, uh, in our nation is coming into a problem, you know, in the community of nations. The other time we're hearing about bandits, bandas, you know. Almost everywhere now, the Nigerian person is despised, you know, mm. once you leave the shores of this country. We need to eschew corruption. Mm. We need to eschew get rich quick syndromes. We need to eschew uh, celebration of Yahoo, mm. celebration of, uh, you know, quick, get rich quick schemes. You know, you be, it's okay to be ambitious. It's legitimate to desire to be rich and wealthy. But you see, uh, when you just want to be rich and wealthy without willing to pay the price, it becomes a pipe dream. You know, mm. it's not just a, you know, it, it's not a worthy ambition. But you see, when you when you have ambition to be wealthy, to make money, mm. to be rich, mm. and then you have vision on how you want to do it, you have an end in end, end point in mind, you know, you and you have a plan, you know, action plan True, towards how you get there, and you activate that plan, you know, and start to take it step, step by step. You know, room was not built in the day, they say, oh, yes. but uh, I have never seen any house that is built from the ground up that is not a grave. You know, only a grave is what you build from the ground, uh, from the up, top down. Oh, you know, yeah. Every other thing, you have to build it from the ground up, brick by brick, brick by brick. So some of us are going to be lucky who are going to be able to, you know, hit it big one time without mm. doing much. Yeah, the, um, it's uh, the destiny of some people to mm. be like that. But for the majority of us, we have to build it gradually. No, no, so we have to tell our youth to learn how to build value, mm. you know, to embrace the culture of service, to embrace the culture of, uh, you know, uh, incremental progress, mm. you know, that you have to progress incrementally Mentally. from step A to B to C yeah. to D before you get to mm. you know the skyscraper. You don't just build the skyscraper in a day. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, as you can you know the camp build the skyscraper in a day and I will so much appreciate to come here. Wow you have really made our day and I'm sure the youth, the African that are watching this live and they are going to continue to watch it and there's just so much that you can pick from here. This is just the first edition of Engaging Mr. Tony Sleman. We're going to have him around more to speak about so many other things, passionate about so many things about this country. If you follow him well on his uh, social media handle, and as a good Nigerian who wants to build a new set of generation, so passionate about young people, about this country, about Africa, and there was so much appreciate you coming. And uh, the Nasty V Africa will look forward to partner with you and with your venture and everything. What we do here, we manifest Africa's design. We give platform to young people with talent to showcase them to the world, to show the world that Africa 
Of course, we have it here. I think the problem is implementation, exploration of our human capital resources. So, the moment we get it right, and then we are trying to tell you that there are Nigerians here that have made it in a legitimate way, that we are never Yahoo, and then that's why we brought you here, so that people can know. And this net worth, I can tell you, is a, is a very uh, conservative person, but I can tell you, uh, this well, next you don't go say well, well, <laughs> so, so better struggle continue. So this is where we call it today uh, on TV African Mentorship Platform. Can you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Nas TV Africa, and follow us on our social media? And my name is Nasir Abukodri, Nas TV Africa. We have a manifest Africa's greatness. Thank you and God bless.